Uh oh. Back again, back to back, made back, stack the M's. Told him I'm a slim shady, bag the M. Once he go black, he'll be back again. Tell him hoes that it's crunch time, abdomen. Yes, I cut Mad Chanel and Mad. These are my samples, and under here. Okay, so we're just gonna start from the bottom. We're gonna come up and so I can show you guys everything that I use. So this right here is periwinkle and titanium, I believe. Right. And it's not quite the color I was going for. I was looking for more of a denim, you know, bluish, not sky blue, but not dark blue color with like a little under tint of like lavender. Something a little bit complicated, but I know exactly what I was going for. Anyways, this isn't really what I wanted. So um, let me actually show you guys how it looked on the bottom. So this is what periwinkle looks like. And as you guys can see, and this looks denim to me. Like when I picked it up, it looked denim. But when you sample it as itself, and I did tone this hair as well, this is what it looks like. So this is not what we want. So then I picked up an ion color called Shark Bloom. This is what it looks like just flat out, just applied straight to the hair. This is what it looks like when it's mixed with titanium from Adore. So this is the Shark Blue from Ion and Titanium. And this is the Shark Blue with Lavender, like the actual lavender color from Adore. This color right here. And I'm leaning more towards the Shark Blue and Titanium. So that's probably what we're gonna stick with. And they do look really dark on camera. But when I'm going to come back when I wash them out so we can see how they really look. These are the samples when they're dry. On my left is the lavender and the shark blue. In the middle it's the shark blue and the titanium. And on the right, this is the shark blue by itself. And then, you know, you can see on the sides a little bit of lavender. It's kind of being messy with the brush. As well as over here and... Excuse my dirty mannequin hair, it's not cute. But yeah, this is what the periwinkle looks like under it. Let me try to flip it over. That purplish color, that's the periwinkle. And if you're into like unicorn colors, I'm actually thinking about doing a unicorn color with these exact colors. So you heard it here first, you sort of blend. But yeah, I really like these colors together. Besides the patches of blonde, which could easily be filled with any color, I feel like this is really, I hope you guys can see it. This is really, really, really pretty. And I just love the colors all together. So now I'm going to take the Ion Shark Blue and I'm just going to deposit it inside of my bowl. And one thing about this dye that I didn't really like is the fact that it's very, very thick. Which means that you have to go through a couple of bottles just to make sure your hair is fully covered. So let's say I had 26 inches in this video. So I literally went through like 8 to 9 bottles of this and it was so annoying i had to keep running back to sally's and getting more you know you can't really find it at your local beauty supply store so it's very very annoying but throughout the video you guys are going to see me really working it into my hair so i can make sure every single strand is perfectly covered another thing that really helped me deposit the color onto my hair was mixing it with conditioner which also makes it lighter because i didn't want it dark blue so you know i had to mix it and make it lighter <laughs>
So as I mentioned before, I wanted a nice lavender undertone. So I just basically mixed the lavender in with the shark blue, also with the conditioner. And that did help make more product, but that still wasn't enough, guys. Oh my goodness, I was so stressed out running back and forth to the store. So I'm just telling you guys what happened to me. So you know that if you want to get the specific color, this is the amount of bottles you will have to get, which is about eight to nine if your hair is longer. You might get past for five if your hair is in shorter lengths, but hey always be on the safe side
Okay, so I know some of you guys are thinking, did I use a different dye for this part? Why does one look lighter? Why does one look darker? And I realized the more I worked it into the hair, the lighter it got. So you see how I just rubbed it in and then it came out extremely baby light blue? I guess that's the secret along with more conditioner. So I did want it to look dimensional and it did look really nice. However, this was the end result. It was just a lot of different blues and trust me, at the end you will tell and I will tell you guys my mistake as well. All right, so now let's get into this frontal. A lot of people ask me, how do you dye your frontal without staining your lace? And I feel like the method that works best for me is to basically take an unused spoolie. Please don't take the spoolie out of your mascara container. Don't come back like Paris, you told me to do this. Now I got black stuff on my frontal. Okay, okay, I'm getting out of here. I just got quick, man. <laughs> but anyways, basically what you do is take an unused spoolie, dip it into the dye, wipe the excess on the actual strand of hair, and then lightly roll it onto the hair close 
to the lace. Now what this does is it doesn't apply so much pressure and so much product on the roots so it gives you room to actually control your strokes and see exactly what you're doing. And then I take the brush and then basically just continue the dye job on that one strand. And I feel like this helps me the most. It does take a little bit more time but on the bright side you only have to do this to the front tool. As far as the back of the hair you can just apply it normally so you can just get it done faster. And I also do really feel like a lot of you guys would like to see me demonstrate this on camera. So what I'm going to do is add this to my lace series that's coming up in December. I'm so excited. A lot of people have been asking me for a lace series. So I'm going to have a list of topics. I'm going to engage with you guys on social media. And you basically just tell me what you want to see, what should I include, etc, etc. And I'll make sure I let you guys know all my secrets, tips, and tricks to keep on my wigs flawless. Out of the many things that I did not like about this hair dye, the one thing I have to say is that the dye does not run. I washed it in the sink, I washed it in the tub, there was no dye residue anywhere. So I'm super happy about that because my parents don't play that, I was not trying to get in trouble. <laughs> but anyways, I really, really like the fact that it did not run, so that's a plus. Also, as you're going to see in the next few clips, um, I basically blow dry the hair and I'm showing what it looks like after it's freshly washed and blow dried. And the only thing that I messed up on with this hair was the fact that once I ran out of dye for the last 25% of the section I had left, I mixed up some concoction of some type of blue and I thought it matched from when I was applying it. But once you see the preview of my hair, once it's installed in my hair and everything, 75% is the denim lavenderish color I wanted and the, the other 25% is blue it's too blue and it's so noticeable and i was so upset but you know what i had to do it and i didn't have any choice and i was gonna rock it anyway so yeah <laughs> So that wraps it up for this voiceover tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned from my mistakes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Chip too hard, don't stand too close. You gon' fuck around and drown off this way. Doing all these shows.